All right, so today's challenge is to walk from this walking bench, which I need a walking bench. Wanda McManus was a badass. This is dedicated to her. I hope one day, Wanda McManus, I hope to uh, live in your footsteps, so to speak. I hope one day they make a uh, walking bench for me. Uh, I'm gonna run this hill. I run this hill a bunch of times, but uh, not quite like this. So we're gonna give her a go. We call this hill Big Bertha. It gets really steep right here. You can't even really tell, this is no justice. But then it gets even steeper. It's just kind of a two part hill, um, but I've been running it. I have not run it yet with weight vest. So this is gonna add, this is 40 pounds. This is the XD weight vest. It's gonna add 40 pounds to the equation and make this 10 times more harder. All right, and away we go. We start running from this bench right here. I'm gonna wait till it goes to 10 seconds. That way I can see about how long it took me. All right, here we go. Can't try to run hard because it gets to be difficult as it is anyway. It'll flatten out up here, which is nice. Chopping those feet up. Big Bertha. Halfway through. It actually makes it kind of hard to have like one arm up while you're running. You need both arms pumping. Never does four. I'll keel over. I know it matter. <clears throat> two seventy five, two hundred seventy five pounds, lugging up this hill. Two seventy, two seventy five. I'm gonna make it. <laughs> A little bit more to go. <laughs> Woo! It's flattened out, but I run to these rocks right here. Whammo. Woo. Maybe about a minute and 40, or two minutes and 40 seconds. Wow. This damn watch, it gives you the heart rate like 20 seconds later. Like what the hell good is that? Maybe you guys know how to set your Apple watch better than I. I just have it set up for a walk, but normally the heart rate's there. Maybe you guys can help me solve that problem. Man, I ain't no runner, but I'm turning myself into one because you can make yourself into anything you want. Understand that? You get it? I'm not good at running. Uh, well, maybe that's true, but compared to who? Compared to yourself, you're not bad because that's all you 
all you got's all you got, right? Compared to somebody else, you're not a good runner. But why would you torture yourself comparing yourself to somebody else, especially somebody who's a qualified runner? Don't make no sense. See how irrational that is? It still hasn't given me the heart rate. Freaking Steve Jabs. He's probably not even dead. He's probably laughing somewhere. What an asshole. All rich people, right? Yeah, now it shows me. And it says it's 2018. Well, good news is I recovered pretty quickly from it, right? Let's just say all rich people are assholes, right? Eh? Bunch of coffee drinking motherfuckers. Bunch of coffee drinking assholes. Whew. But again, let me tell you can make yourself anything that you want. I was not born an elite powerlifter. I was not born to break world records in powerlifting, although I do think that powerlifting kind of chose me um, in, in a weird way. I just think that sometimes these things get presented to you um, and they get presented to you and they get presented to you and it just becomes so obvious that that's your quote unquote calling really it just was my interest but anyway you can become anything that you're interested in a writer a musician a filmmaker a tv star internet icon <laughs> meathead millionaire you can become anything that you want and you can achieve anything you want I had a friend lately ask me a lot about goals. And then he also asked me like, hey, like, is there anything you haven't done? Or, you know, th those kinds of things. Um, anything you really desire to do that you've never done? And I was like, no, I don't. And I, you know, I don't, it's not that I am blunting my desires. I just don't have them in the, that regard. I guess like, you know, if there was one thing, I mean, I would really love to be able to eat pizza, you know, every day. But if I really think about it, I, that's not really what I want because I want to have a body that I'm proud of. And if I ate pizza every day, that would just make it that much more difficult. Not that I couldn't have the body I want and eat pizza. Uh, it would just, it would just be more difficult, more complicated. I'd rather have it be, the way I do it is very manageable. And it's very simple and it's gotten easier and I keep getting, I feel like I keep getting in a better place with it all the time. But anyway, you can work your way into, you can work your way towards anything. You know, stop, you know, you guys know about negative comments, negative commentary to yourself. I apologize about the wind. I'm still figuring out what to do about it. They don't really make a lot of good stuff for it. They make these big, giant, fuzzy fucking things that go on your phone that makes it look like your phone needs to shave its pussy, but... Maybe I'll try that, <laughs> but I don't want people thinking my phone is from the 70s, if you know what I'm saying. Well, anyway, when did women's pubic hair disappear? <sighs> Probably uh, early 90s, maybe. Anyway, maybe somebody, <laughs> some a historian maybe can, can uh, pop on here and uh, <laughs> let us know. Evolution. Um, anyway, you know, reinterpret the things that you hear, reinterpret the things that you tell yourself. I heard an awesome quote the other day. You should never be heard over. You should never be heard complaining. You should never be overheard complaining, especially by yourself. Try living by that moniker. Try living by that motto. Man, that's a bitch. I'm gonna complain about it right now. That would be tough to live by that, but that is fantastic. That is a Marcus Aurelius uh, saying, and I think it's a very good one. But you have all the faculties, you have all the capacity to become who and whatever you want to become. It's just a matter of where your interest level is. If you find that your motivation wavers when you're trying to get a six pack, when you're trying to get some abs, you find that you your interest you just find you find that your motivation is lacking it just means that you don't have enough interest in it it just means it's not really there 
And then you have to kind of question, like, is this really truly making me happy? And does this make me happy? Whereas something like bouncing up and down on a trampoline or going on a swing, I like going on a swing. How funny is that? I like going like on a swing set and going, going back and forth on a swing. It makes me happy. I do it every chance I get when I'm walking and running, going through parks and stuff. And people think I'm weird, but I enjoy it. Sometimes things like that are easier to answer whether you like them or not because they're kind of fun, right? And like lifting isn't always necessarily just like flat out fun like that. Anyway, you catch my drift. You know what I'm saying? Like you claim that you want to be great. Um, well, define what you want to be great in and define like wh what is that destination? You know, I, I don't have goals because I always think that goals are like a trap. I have more like a to-do list. I got shit to do. Things that I would like to do. It's not a goal. Because if I'd really like to do it, then I'm gonna actually do it. It's not something that I'm trying to obtain because I'm not trying to try it. I'm not trying it, I'm doing it. I, I, I'm investigating, I'm looking into it, I'm working on it. I am, uh, I'm working towards it but I'm either out of it or I'm in it. And when I set my mind to do something, I, I just start to do it. I don't really talk about it any longer. I just start working on it. I just start doing some things to be able to do it. Anyway, that's my perspective. That's the way I look at things, but I don't have a lot of extra, I don't feel like I have gaps, maybe except for between my teeth. I feel very happy. I feel very confident in the things I say, the things I do, the people I collaborate with, the people I hang out with, the relationships I have. Not that everything is perfect, not that everything is great. However, I can just interpret stuff whatever way I want or need to. And so, because of the way you interpret stuff, everything can kind of be great or everything can kind of be working towards being good or working towards being better there could be a horrific situation going on but there could still be other circumstances surrounding that horrific situation that make it not necessarily horrific like they keep calling what's going on right now a crisis i i don't view it as a crisis i don't view it as a tragedy i don't view it as any of those any of those things there's a virus that's around. That's always, there's always been viruses around. Viruses have always killed people. This one's attacking people a little bit faster. That's it. And the reason why I'm not like sweating it is because I can detach myself from it through, through multiple practices of just understanding the facts. And maybe for other people, when they hear that a million people have it and there's more casualties in Vietnam, maybe that freaks them out. But that does not scare me at all. And the reason isn't because I'm a fucking idiot. The reason is because I think that millions upon millions upon millions of people in the United States, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 million people, somebody could argue some of these numbers, but it's definitely more than a million that they tested that have the coronavirus. It's in the millions. I would say, you know, show me somebody that would refute that there's like less than 5 million people that have it or have, have had it. I don't, I don't think anyone could give you that. If you extrapolate the numbers out, you end up with a fuck ton of people that have had it. Anyway, even if it was killing more people, even if it was killing triple the amount of people, I wouldn't be scared of it. I'm not scared of the dead. Just like I'm not scared of the unborn. And dying, I don't think is the worst thing that can happen to you. <laughs> now, it's sad. It, it, you know, you, you end up interpreting it as being sad when somebody passes. But, again, if you can separate yourself out, you can zoom out for a couple layers. And you can start to think about the facts. Yeah, you're still probably... You know, your value assignment to that person, who was it? Was it your mom? Then you're gonna be, then you're probably gonna be, your value assignment is probably high, right? Is it your dad, is it your brother, your sister? 
something you're close to, your value assignment's probably through the roof. So there could be more emotional ties to that. But again, if you zoom out and you get back to the facts, and you get back to reality, you know, my brother, my oldest brother, a childhood hero, Mad Dog Mike Bell, you know, he died in his mid thirties. He was bipolar. He was addicted to drugs. And the more that I zoom out on that, the easier it is to talk about it. And the easier it is for me to detach from the fact that he was my brother. Because many people have bipolar. Many people suffer from bipolar disorder and many people die from being bipolar. Many people die of drug overdoses. It happens all the time. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't mean I'm not empathetic. It doesn't mean I'm a sociopath. I understand. I have cognitive empathy towards that. I recognize it. I recognize, oh crap, the whole family might be super sad about this. I need to figure out how I can help everybody. I need to figure out how I can assist everybody. But when you look at the facts, it becomes easier. Maybe somebody in your family got wiped out by a heart attack, diabetes, a car accident. Well, if they had diabetes or heart disease, then you can kind of look at the facts. Well, many people die of heart attack and many people have genetic disorders that maybe uh, pre-expose them to having an issue with their heart then maybe also they had a stressful life and maybe they didn't have any caution when it came to when it came to when it came to their nutrition and when it came to their exercise maybe they never adhered to anything and then ultimately there's going to be a price to pay because that is not necessarily just a disease that is one of the most dangerous things in this world and that's called neglect neglect is very powerful and neglect is probably I, I don't know, man. I, it's tough. Neglect has got to be up there. You don't want to, I don't want to rival the different pains that you can have. But man, neglect is a form of abuse that's, that can be really, really powerful. And see, hopefully you see what I'm saying. Hopefully you're understanding what I'm talking about. But as you continue to take a step back and say, oh my God, that's that. Okay. As you take another step back, say, okay, okay. Oh my God, that's, that's that, you know. And then also too, with learning these facts and learning these things, maybe these are things that are preventable. So if someone dies from a heart attack in your family, maybe you can say, hey, you know what? Um, you just get around and talk about this. Maybe we should make sure this doesn't happen again. You know, and, and people, you know, just in general, people die. It's part of the cycle. It's part of the circle of life. People die. And, uh, you know, I've dealt with death a bunch of times and that's why I'm able to talk about it. Maybe you don't find uh, some of the things I'm saying to be true, but I hope that you at least find them to be helpful. If I'm gonna teach you how to, how to lift, I'm gonna hold you captive and uh, try to teach you how to live a little bit. Got some good training in today. Um, dished out my 100 squats, dished out my 100 push-ups, and uh, this is 80 minutes of exercise right here. I've been kind of going all, not kind of, I've been going all in on this stuff. This is 3.27 miles with a 40 pound vest on. Probably got in like eight or 10 sprints during that, or eight or 10 runs rather. Really productive uh, exercise right there. I'll probably come back out here a little bit later today and get it another run as that'll be a little bit more mild, but just enjoying myself, I'm having fun. No rules, um, you know, not about to listen to anybody about like overtraining or anything like that. I'm. You know, the intensity of everything is pretty low. So that means the frequency can be high, right? And the duration can be long if the intensity is low. So anyway, I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm gonna go inside and cook up a big old steak and keep living by the code. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you all later. Big props to my boy, Todd Abrams. Really appreciate him sending over all this icon meals. Let me show you guys what's in this uh, box that he just sent. You have a lot of different food places to choose from, uh, but icon meals has been my favorite for a very long time. No disrespect to the companies out there that are working hard and, and getting the job done as well. Chopped brisket with uh, cauliflower. He makes a lot of great keto choices. He has a lot of great 
um, just kind of like bodybuilder-ish, just healthy lifestyle, healthy living. I right now I'm eating rice and eating potatoes and stuff like that. So he sent me kind of a combination of, I'm still keeping the carbs low. Salisbury steak keto. Oh my God. I got to try that one. That's got to be really good. This one, this one, uh, I was eating like all last week, super low in calories, period. Just chicken cordon bleu and some beans, green beans, um, a brisket omelet. You kidding me? I'm going to be eating this stuff. I'm going to eat all this in one day is probably the problem. I'm going to keep just going right through all this. Anyway, if any of this stuff is looking good to you, um, by the way, you should check out Todd Abrams too on, uh, on Instagram, he's all shredded like he knows the deal. He knows the score. Ooh, pancakes. That looks really good. A lot of fun stuff. Things that I wouldn't normally cook up at home. Like, I'm not going to cook up shrimp at home. I'm not going to cook up, like, salmon at home, really. Like, I just don't... I don't typically do that that often. Not that there'd be anything wrong with that. I just... I choose not to do that. But they got a lot of great choices. And if you want to go check it out, you can use my... Code, which is Mark Bell at checkout, I think it gives, well, it gives you a percentage off. I'm not sure if it's 10% or 15%. But go check it out. Go check out Icon Meals. Um, you know, at this at this particular time, you know, anything that reduces your stress level, anything that uh, helps you stay prepared and helps you stay healthy and nutritious, I think is a huge advantage. Ooh, Angus Beef Chimichurra. Damn. Anyway, thanks a lot, Icon Meals.